Today, I'm going to tell you about a game that happens to be my favorite video game of all time, bar none. And a game that, were it not for an extremely unlikely rescue operation conducted here in the United States, likely would have never seen the light of day at all. This is the story of how the Xbox's best game vanished and then suddenly reappeared. And the game I'm talking about is a game called Phantom Dust. Phantom Dust. This game, I believe, is a true masterpiece, but you don't have to take my word for it. A while back, I snuck a little bit of footage of Phantom Dust into my second person video, which led to comments like these. This game just tends to elicit some really effusive praise from those of us who played it. Uh, this is actually my personal all-time favorite game. I like this more than Witcher, Dark Souls, and Monster Hunter, and Neo, and everything. There is nothing I enjoy as much as Phantom Dust. So what are these people talking about? What is it about this game that left such an indelible impression on seemingly everyone who played it, myself included? Honestly, it's hard to decide where to start because top to bottom, everything about Phantom Dust is an anomaly. There's its ageless, never imitated nor duplicated game design. There's its intensely Y2K tinged visual and musical aesthetic. There's its graphics, which seem to be a full generation ahead of its time. I mean, remember, this is an Xbox game that, for some reason, looks like a late generation 360 game at worst. So, okay, how about this? Uh, let me start with a question. What if card games were real? Or, like, maybe I'm not saying that right, but, okay, so you know how card games usually depict something pretty action-packed, say, a fight between a knight and a dragon, or a goblin being incinerated by a magical spell? Like, let's say you're playing Magic the Gathering with a friend, and you throw a massive fireball directly at your opponent's head. In theory, that sounds cool, but in practice, it often ends up just looking like this. And look, I love magic, but you gotta admit, that's a little bit anticlimactic, right? And so, the question Phantom Dust asks is, what if, instead of looking like this, card games looked like this? See, for a certain audience, myself included, digital card games can be great. I play Magic the Gathering Arena almost every single day, and I played Hearthstone for years on end. But I also suspect that there's a lot of people out there who see the words digital card game and just instinctively turn away because those words can make it sound a little dry or a little boring. And I think Phantom Dust is the cure to that problem. This game supposes, what if there was a card game that felt like an action game, but kept everything cool about card games? What if digital card games had gameplay that was actually as exciting as the things they depict? So that instead of playing like this, they played more like this. Obviously that's a cool concept, but it's also easier said than done, and it would take a truly brilliant, one-of-a-kind game designer to execute that idea properly and make something actually fun to play. Enter legendary Japanese game designer Yukio Futatsugi. Now you may not know Futatsugi-san by name, but it's highly likely you've at least heard of his work, in particular the cult classic Panzer Dragoon series. Now, Phantom Dust is not just a continuation of the PD acronym he started with Panzer Dragoon, it also builds on Futatsugi-san's legacy of making games that are deeply beloved by a small but very loyal group of people. In fact, it turns out if you read old interviews of Yukio Futatsugi, that was always what he wanted this game to be. Quote, I want to create something with permanence, something that will remain in the hearts of the group of people I made the game for. Something for those who are starving for a new experience, something that will stay fresh and unique 10 years after its release. Something that uses graphics and sound to leave a mark in the minds of players. Something that doesn't look like any other game. That's what I want to create. And viewer, I can promise you one thing, he succeeded. I can't overstate this, if you have ever enjoyed a card game, digital or physical, you owe it to yourself to at least try Phantom Dust. 
Hell, even if you don't like card games, if you find them too boring or not interactive enough, I sincerely think this game was built for you. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What is this game exactly? Like, how does it work? Here is a super quick summary. Phantom Dust is an arena combat game where two to four players, each with 20 health, share the goal of trying to reduce their opponent's health to zero. Each of these players brings with them a deck of cards they've built called an arsenal, which contains 30 different cards called skills. At the start of each game, players spawn on opposite corners of the arena and are dealt a hand of four random cards from their deck. These white cards are known as aura particles, and these are the currency you spend to play your cards, the equivalent of mana in other card games. Each time you consume an aura particle from your hand, your level permanently goes up by one. And so, for instance, if you've consumed three aura particles, your level is three, which means you can play any card that costs three or less. <laughs> now, once you spend mana to play a card, your level will drop by that card's cost, but slowly will recharge back up to whatever your level is. And then you can spend that mana all over again, however you want. So that's the basics, and with that out of the way, we can talk about the really fun part, the cards. Look, skills, efforts, oh, care to try it? The cards, known again in-game as skills, each have a few components. There's the cost, which is how much mana it costs to use, the strength, which is how much damage it does if it hits, how many times you can use it, most skills can either be used once or an infinite number of times, and crucially, the attack's intended range. See, most of the time in Phantom Dust, you will be locked onto your opponent. And while that's happening, the reticle targeting them will indicate whether they're considered a short, medium, or long distance away, each indicated by a different color. So, for example, a short-range skill like Psycho Blade is obviously best used up close, right in your opponent's face, whereas a long-range skill like Octo Laser is drastically more effective when you're far away. Now, the reason I describe that as the intended range leads me to one of my favorite things about Phantom Dust. Often, descriptors like short-range or long-range aren't requirements, they're mere suggestions. That's part of the beauty of Phantom Dust. There's plenty of quote unquote long range skills in the game that are perfectly effective at medium or even close range, something that's only possible because Phantom Dust is a 3D real time video game. And that leads us right to one of my absolute favorite things about Phantom Dust. The way this game takes normally rigid card game mechanics and applies them to combat in large scale 3D physical arenas. This, in my mind, is truly the heart and soul of Phantom Dust. This is the thing that sets this game apart from a normal card game and makes each battle play out completely differently. And to help me illustrate this point, I'm going to give you a quick comparison. Let's take a direct damage burn spell from Magic the Gathering and put it up against a comparable spell in Phantom Dust. So here we have Lava Axe from Magic, which reads, Lava Axe deals 5 damage to target player. This card is extremely straightforward. It basically does exactly what it says the same exact way every time you play it. You pay five mana and assuming no one counters it, it does five damage to your opponent every time. Simple. Now for comparison's sake, let's look at the Phantom Dust skill Bullet of Fire. Much like Lava Axe in Magic, Bullet of Fire is a straightforward card. You pay two mana and it deals two damage to your opponent. But unlike in Magic the Gathering where this attack is relatively abstract, I throw a fireball at you dealing X damage, in Phantom Dust, this fireball attack is now exteriorized in a 3D game world. And this literalization of card game text opens up a tremendous amount of possibilities. So now, instead of I throw a fireball at you for two damage, you've got outcomes like I throw a fireball at you, but you duck behind a nearby wall negating the attack. Or I throw a fireball at you and it knocks you out of midair, interrupting your attack and sending you hurtling 15 feet onto the concrete below, the impact from which causes you to take additional damage. Or I throw a fireball at you and it hits a pillar holding up a huge chunk of the environment, causing the whole thing to collapse onto both of us, dealing a massive amount of damage.
Now these are just a few examples of how combat can go down in Phantom Dust. And these elements, the fact that the combat is real time, that the environments are highly destructible, that players can play with things like gravity and invisibility and speed buffs and debuffs, all of these things come together to create a tremendous possibility space for each battle you play. In this context, even the most rote and vanilla card game mechanics take on a whole new meaning. Suddenly something as simple as I cast lightning bolt on you for 3 damage becomes I cast lightning bolt on you but you notice the storm clouds forming and cartwheeled out of the way in time or I cast lightning bolt on you but you happen to step under a bridge at that exact moment which protected you from the strike. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more depth to this game that I could possibly summarize in one video, including the fact that there's stuff that's not even printed on the card, like the ability to throw fireballs in midair with certain spells. And it's not all fireballs. Like there's orbital skills that attack you from above. There's crawlers that come across the ground. There's mines you can plant in the ground that opponents can totally miss, causing them to take damage or get frozen. And it gets crazier because all we've talked about so far is attack skills, the red skills. Phantom Dust also has defensive skills, these blue ones, which can block and even reflect opponent attacks. <laughs> Erase skills, which can delete specific cards from your opponent's hand. Ah! Status skills, which can buff you or debuff your opponents. Special skills, which do all sorts of crazy stuff, like let you jump 30 feet in the air, or fly, or turn invisible. There's even something called environmental skills that will alter the rules of the game for everyone in the match. Now, if you're anything like me, just hearing about the existence of all these different types of attacks probably fills your head with possibilities. And one of the remarkable things about Phantom Dust is how well it explores these possibilities. Phantom Dust ultimately, after a few patches, which, yeah, they did content patches in an original Xbox game, wound up containing over 350 different cards, each with its own quirks and interesting use cases. Oh yeah, and then there's the single player, which I somehow haven't mentioned yet. This game had a full-fledged single-player campaign over 40 hours long with this moody, mysterious story, tons of cutscenes, a sprawling underground hub world of survivors you can talk to and take on missions from, cooperate with, and some really insane scenarios and boss fights to go up against. And look, if it seems like I'm struggling to cram everything I love about Phantom Dust into one video, it's because I am. I could talk for ages about the things that set this game apart and still not cover half of what makes it special. It's why I still consider Phantom Dust my favorite game of all time, and why, almost 20 years after its release, I still can't shut up about it. So okay, hopefully that at least scratched the surface of what made this game so cool from a gameplay perspective. But let's talk about where this game came from. At, at this point, you're probably wondering, who developed this eccentric, extremely Japanese video game? Like, I want you to actually guess, who do you think made this? Could it be, I don't know, From Software? They certainly put out some cool, quirky stuff on the Xbox in the early 2000s. Or how about Sega? How about some internal Sega team, like Amusement Vision or Smilebit? Smilebit would make a lot of sense, I think. All right, enough guessing. Pencils down. Are you ready for the answer? Here it is. That's right. Phantom Dust was developed internally at Microsoft Game Studios. And you're probably thinking, wait, Microsoft Game Studios is in the developer who made this? It's time. And this? Yes. Kind of. So, yes, it is true that Phantom Dust was developed internally by one of Microsoft's own internal Xbox development teams, but to be specific, it was part of the short-lived imprint Microsoft Game Studios Japan. Announced in 2003 for release both in Japan and in Western territories, the development of Phantom Dust was, from what I can gather, a truly international production. The brunt of Phantom Dust creation took place mostly in Microsoft Game Studios Japan's Tokyo office under the direction of Yukio Futatsugi, but the game was frequently worked on and even playtested by American Microsoft employees over in the States, with the two teams visiting each other surprisingly often. And among those Microsoft employees who played Phantom Dust early, it was a huge hit. In fact, here's a first-hand account told to me by legendary game designer and namesake of the Clob Gun in GoldenEye, Ken Lobb. So I was at Xbox when 
uh, Furutsuki san oh. inside MGSJ originally did Phantom Dust, and I was a huge fan then. I was I went to Japan a couple times a year. We talk about the game, play the game. There were a bunch of us inside uh, Microsoft Game Studios that were addicted to it. Development on Phantom Dust seemed to be going swimmingly by all accounts, but then something unexpected happened. Something virtually unprecedented. Less than a year after announcing it, Microsoft unannounced it. Just a few short weeks before Phantom Dust's planned September 2004 release date, Microsoft doubled back and actually reversed their plans to release this game in the United States. The English version of Phantom Dust was no more. Now, as you might expect, hunting down information about how and why this game's US release got canceled is not an easy task. Standing between us and the info we're looking for here is Microsoft's typical Silicon Valley secrecy, about 15 years of time, and the entire Pacific Ocean, and the language barrier that comes with it. So, as I'm sure you can imagine, this is an extremely niche bit of video game history, and not a particularly well-documented one. However, while researching this video, I came across something pretty interesting. I found a citation on the Phantom Dust Wikipedia article that pointed me towards a specific issue of Xbox Nation magazine. Now, as luck would have it, this issue is itself its own bit of lost media. There are no scans of this issue other than the cover anywhere on the internet. So, of course, I scoured the internet trying to find back issues I could buy and came across a pile of old issues of XBN on eBay. So last week, this pile of issues of XBN arrives at my doorstep, and immediately I go right for issue 16, this one, the one with, what is this, Oddworld Stranger's Wrath? Was, I guess it was called Oddworld Stranger at one point. I guess yeah, they so. changed the name. And I begin flipping through it looking for any mention of Phantom Dust. So I brace myself to settle for just one random paragraph about Phantom Dust's cancellation, maybe in like a random column near the end of the magazine, and what I found instead was much better. I found this, a full page story specifically on Phantom Dust's US cancellation titled Left in the Dust, Release of Microsoft's Phantom Dust to be Relegated to Asian Markets. So this article about Phantom Dust is written with a lot of heart by somebody who clearly fell in love with this game early. The author is unnamed, but I have to imagine it's XBN Japan editor Ryan Payton. And I'm going to read you a couple key passages that I found pretty illuminating. In a surprise announcement last month, Microsoft reversed plans to bring Phantom Dust stateside. Developed internally at Microsoft Game Studios in Tokyo, Phantom Dust feels like a culmination of Japan's most marketable cultural exports making Microsoft's decisions seem even more opaque. And then, here's my favorite part. At Microsoft's press event last month in the fashionable Harajuku district of Tokyo, Phantom Dust lead director Yukio Futatsugi seemed unfazed by Microsoft's decision to make his game exclusive to Asian markets. At one of the kiosks running a near final build of the game, Futatsugi quietly reset the unit, changed some settings, and booted up a fully translated English version with a big grin on his face. His team had developed an English version simultaneously in hopes of a North American release. So that to me is pretty crazy. This game, in anticipation of its Western launch, had already been fully translated, fully localized into English, with full English language voice acting for all the cutscenes. Which means that, compared to most Japanese games, localizing and releasing Phantom Dust in English would have been trivial. And maybe you're thinking, okay, but surely Microsoft had a good reason to not release this game in America. And frankly, you're right. In a recent editorial, Ryan Payton, the same guy who I think wrote this article, revealed that the Japanese version of Phantom Dust in its first month of release only sold 6,000 copies. In all likelihood, these dismal sales in Japan probably scared Microsoft away from releasing the game in the West, as Japan was the territory where Phantom Dust was supposed to do well. Still, the fact that Microsoft announced this game, translated it, and then chose not to release it was a huge bummer for a very, very, very small subset of Xbox enthusiasts in the early 2000s, myself included. In fact, even within Microsoft, the decision not to publish Phantom Dust in the West ruffled some feathers. There were a bunch of us inside uh, Microsoft Game Studios that were trying to push upper management into this is good, this is good, this is good. And the game was fully localized by Microsoft when it first came out and we just didn't bring it to the States because everyone was like, what, How, what is this? This game right. is crazy. Now the incredible story of this game doesn't end there, not even close, but before we continue, I have a quick 
personal story of my own, a story about making this video. See, I've been toying with the idea of doing a huge video about Phantom Dust for years, and when I decided it was finally time, I knew I wanted this to be the definitive Phantom Dust video. And to me, that would involve getting in touch with at least some of the people peripherally involved with this game's development. Right off the bat, I knew there was no way I'd be able to talk to the creator, Yukio Futatsugi, the man is, to put it mildly, a legend among Japanese game developers, and a guy whose historic contributions to video game history have been well documented over the years. Between Futatsugi-san's no doubt busy schedule and the language barrier that I assumed we'd have, I knew I'd have to set my sights elsewhere. So instead, I decided to reach out to a man named AJ Redmer. Back in the year 2000, AJ was hired by Microsoft as the creative director for a secretive project Microsoft was working on. Their debut in the home gaming console space, then codenamed the Direct Xbox. Soon after AJ's hire, Microsoft decided that to be competitive in this industry, they'd need to compete with Sony's racing game juggernaut, Gran Turismo. And so, Xbox formed an internal studio focused on racing games and promoted AJ to the head of the studio, where he oversaw development on nearly a dozen racing titles on the Xbox. Here's where it gets interesting. In 2002, Microsoft moved AJ from their Redmond, Washington headquarters to Tokyo, Japan, where he took on a new role as the head of Microsoft Game Studios Japan, a role that involved overseeing their burgeoning efforts to court Japanese game developers and players. Microsoft would go on to ship a decent amount of Japanese games on the original Xbox, including Blinks the Time Sweeper, but as for games actually developed within Microsoft Game Studios Japan, there were, as best I can tell, only two. A medieval Japan-themed action game called Magatama, and, you guessed it, Phantom Dust. Now, as the primary American Microsoft employee who oversaw Phantom Dust development, I figured AJ would be a great person to talk to. So I reached out to AJ, hoping he could reply with an interesting story or two from the development of this game. And when AJ finally did reply, that's not what I got. Not at all. In fact, I'll just show it to you. AJ wrote, Hello, Nick. Thanks for reaching out about Phantom Dust. That does bring back some fond memories. I'd be happy to chat, but I may be able to do better. The real person you would want to talk to is Yukio Futatsugi. I will check in with him and see if he is up for it. Although he won't admit it, his English is pretty good. Regards, AJ. I can't adequately describe how excited I was when I saw this response. This man, Yukio Futatsugi, is pretty much my hero, legitimately one of the few people on my bucket list who I'd always said I'd give anything to speak with, right up there with Scott Olkers. And if you've been listening to me talk about video games for any length of time on the internet, you probably already know how much this man's game means to me. Phantom Dust. Phantom Dust. Phantom Dust. Phantom Dust, a game called Phantom Dust. Xbox Live, Phantom Dust, Modern Warfare 3 controller. Phantom Dust. Phantom Dust. Another crazy thing is that Phantom Dust, my favorite video game ever is, it's Phantom Dust. And now, out of nowhere, this total stranger had just offered me an interview with a guy completely out of the blue. So, of course, I said yes. And before I knew it... Hi, I'm Yukio Futatsugi. Nice to meet you. First things first, thank you so, so much for taking the time to talk with me about Phantom Dust. When I was around 14 or 15, I imported a copy of Famitsu to get the Phantom Dust poster. And I had it like hanging above my my bed in my my bedroom in, in high school and stuff. So I've been a long time fan of the game. It's been about 16 years since Phantom Dust came out, at least in America. Uh, how do you feel looking back at Phantom Dust now? Like, are you are you proud of it? Are you satisfied by it? Eto... ま、本当にマイクロソフトに入って、えっと、新しいタイトルを考えてくれって言われた時に、えっと、ま、自分はそのカードゲームが当時からすごく好きだったんですね。一番遊んだのはマジック・ザ・ギャザリング。ティフス
One of the things that's always been amazing about Phantom Dust to me is that it was an original Xbox game, but I really think that it looked like an Xbox 360 game. Maybe I'm nostalgic and biased, but it always felt like not just ahead of its time in terms of game design, but like visually it's so beautiful. まあ、それが通ってマイクロソフトとしてじゃあこれを最後まで開発しましょうってなった時にえっとこれが今マイクロソフトで開発してる最先端のタイトルですって言って <laughs> wow, impressive. Do, is there, uh, do you have any specific memories from the development of Phantom Dust that stand out to you? もう仕事が終わっても自分たちの作ってるゲームを遊ぶとか休憩時間に自分たちのゲームを遊ぶっていうことは長い開発者の中でその時だけですし、まあやっぱりすごそれはすごくあのチーム一丸となる盛り上が
だからマイクロソフトの中でもすごく熱狂的に押してくれてこれは面白いっていう人とゲームがよくわからないっていう人に2つに分かれたんですね、まあ、だからそれが多分いろいろ起きた原因だと思います。Now, in 99.9% of cases, that's where this story would end. Microsoft made a unilateral decision not to publish a game, their game that they developed themselves and paid for completely, so that would be the end of it. But that's not what happened. See, at the 11th hour, through some sort of deal that I still don't understand the details of, a very unlikely hero swooped in the now defunct video game publisher Majesco. Throughout the years, Majesco has continued to deliver hit after hit of high quality interactive entertainment for a variety of gaming systems. Just six months after the Japanese launch of Phantom Dust, all of a sudden the game was arriving on North American store shelves, ludicrously priced at a mere $19.99. And Everything about this is weird. I mean, here we have an exclusive first party Xbox game developed by Microsoft themselves that they're declining to release in their largest territory, and it was getting released by Majesco, by a budget game publisher. According to Yukio, though, this was a thrilling development. Well, that's the case of Majesco. I think it was a good thing to release it. I think it was a good thing to release it. I think it was a good thing to release it. Upper management into this is good, this is good, this is good. Times being what happened, we ended up with not shipping the game. Majesco did it in the US, etc. Bad history,、yeah. long story. We'll save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> Now, interesting side note this series of events with Majesco releasing the game in a weird roundabout way. Is actually the reason I'm such a huge Phantom Dust fan. As a kid, I found it way easier to justify buying a $20 game than a $50 game for obvious reasons, so I impulse bought Phantom Dust, and the rest for me is history. In fact, I loved Phantom Dust so much that when the holidays rolled around that year, I found a guy on eBay selling sealed copies for a couple bucks each and bought a handful of them for my friends to give away as Christmas presents. Which led to every single person in my friend group, including my friend Ryan behind the camera, becoming just as obsessed with Phantom Dust as I was. In fact, I was so crazy about this game as a kid that I even imported the soundtrack CD from Japan. I listened to this soundtrack all the time as a kid, and I even included it in my first ever upload on this YouTube channel, a video project that I did for my ninth grade English class about the book Siddhartha. Oh, hello. I didn't notice you because I had my hands on my favorite Dickens. Now, tragically, I no longer have that poster or that soundtrack, but check this out. Oh, hold on. Look at that. Huh? And then also got this. Also got this right here. <laughs> that felt natural and good. By the way, one of my favorite things about this soundtrack is included in every copy of it was this an actual Phantom Dust card. From a non existent Phantom Dust trading card game that they never actually released. One of my favorite collector's items of all time. And if you're wondering how I got these back all these years later, the answer is actually connected to this video sponsor, Baiyi. Baiyi, if you haven't heard of them, is an indispensable resource for anyone interested in buying things from Japan. Here's how it works if you're unfamiliar. By using Baiyi's website, you can purchase all sorts of stuff from retailers like Yahoo Auction Japan, Mercari, Rakuten, and more. Retailers who typically don't offer shipping outside of Japan. From there, Baiyi will allow you to consolidate all your Japan purchases into one single package and ship it to you all at once, which saves you a tremendous amount of time and money. It rules. Baiyi was legitimately indispensable in researching for this video. They helped me buy things like this Tokyo Game Show magazine DVD from 2003, and this Phantom Dust Japanese demo disc that I had never seen before, but I just found trawling through Yahoo Auctions Japan. That is like a collector's item that maybe no one on earth cares about except for me, but that's kind of the thing Baiyi's perfect for. If you'd like to try out Baiyi for yourself, head to bit.ly slash Baiyi Nick Robinson, or just click the link in the description. New Baiyi users will get a coupon for $2,000. Yen worth of Baiyi purchases absolutely free. So, this is my favorite part of the video. This is what I've been looking forward to most. 
See, I've talked before about games like Phantom Dust, games that are beloved to me personally but didn't get the attention they deserved. And often these stories have pretty sad endings, like in the case of Driver San Francisco, for example, where the game was suddenly yanked from sale on every single platform for reasons that still aren't totally clear. But what appeals to me about this story, and what makes me so eager to share it with all of you, is that this time around, the situation is different. In fact, with Phantom Dust, it's kind of the opposite. See, unlike so many of these lost classic games that unceremoniously fall off the face of the planet, Phantom Dust has been saved, preserved perfectly. And not only has it been preserved, It's available for free right now on Xbox and PC with full Xbox Live for anyone who wants it for zero dollars. Let me repeat that. The person watching this, if you have an Xbox or a PC, you can go get Phantom Dust, the whole game, including the full single player campaign, cross platform multiplayer, all of it, right this second, legally for zero dollars. Pretty insane, right? Oh, also, it's been remastered in 4K and has a thousand achievement points if you're into that sort of thing and has split screen. <laughs> it's a free video game now. Maybe you're wondering why, how did this happen? How is one of the best video games ever made just sitting there for free on the Xbox store? It's a long, twisty, confusing story, one that involves a series of social media teases, an E3 stage reveal, and a Phantom Dust reboot that was later canceled. But long story short, it led to this. A world in which somehow my personal favorite game of all time got a full 4K remaster available for free to anyone who wants to play it. And that's incredible. Here's the problem though. As of the time I'm recording this, if you load up Phantom Dust and hop into matchmaking, this is what you'll see. See, outside a few dozen Phantom Dust veterans who still run their own high-level 2v2 Phantom Dust tournaments with commentary, which, by the way, really fun to watch, and I definitely recommend you check these guys out. And the Ice Sword, and the Lightning Sword, and PD puts it away. Other than them, there's bafflingly few people playing this amazing game. And that's something that I think needs to change. So I've been racking my brain about what we can actually do about this, and here's what I've come up with. I'm launching a Phantom Dust happy hour. Starting this Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific, we're gonna hop onto Phantom Dust and just casually run some matches, you and me. We can try out everything from 2v2 to free-for-all to one of my favorite modes, Quick Play, where the game gives everyone a pre-constructed deck from the developers, perfect for newcomers, so if you've never played a card game before, you don't even have to worry about deck building. And my hope is that even if you're brand new to this and have never heard of Phantom Dust before, which I imagine describes many of you, this will hopefully be a pretty great way for you to experience what's so good about this game. With any luck, this happy hour will be a fun enough and successful enough event that we can make this a recurring weekly thing. And on that note, I've also set up a Google Calendar for these Phantom Dust happy hours if you want a reminder, and a brand new Phantom Dust Discord server to make it easy to find matches, discuss deck building strategy, etc. There's links to both of these in the description. Again, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, mark your calendar. I'll be there. Hopefully we can bring this amazing game back to life. So with all that behind us, I feel like there's still one big obvious question here, one elephant in the room. It's been almost 18 years since this singular, one of a kind, deeply underrated, ahead of its time game came out. So. What about the future of Phantom Dust? Is there hope for more of it? It's hard to say for sure. I think a lot of it depends on whether or not this community can be bolstered again. But when I asked Yukio how he felt about Phantom Dust today, one of the first things he said was this. What's your main feeling when you think back on Phantom Dust today? Windows 
が出る時もマイクロソフトになんかそういうとこ変えれないみたいな話をしたんですけど、まあ、ちょっとそのまま出したいっていうふうに言われたので。What are some, some of the things that, that you would want to update in a potential sequel to Phantom Dust? Phantom Dust is a very good game. あのみんなで対戦できないっていうところがその最初のハードルがやっぱ高かったと思うんですね。でそれを何とかする方法を、まあ、いくつか思いついてるので、まあ、それをそういう仕組みも入れたいと思ってます。Now, of course, it's very cool that when asked about this old game, not only does Futatsugi san immediately start talking about how he's been ruminating on ideas for a sequel for the past 15 years. But it's also really cool and actually heartening that Futatsugi san is so protective of these ideas that he doesn't want to say them out loud to me and would rather hold them back for the sequel to surprise fans. To me, that indicates that not only is the first game truly this man's pride and joy, but he seems hell bent on taking another stab at it someday and bringing us back to the world of Phantom Dust. And while Microsoft still owns the rights to the Phantom Dust IP, there's every indication that they're open to this idea too. Around the time of this re release, I spoke to studio creative director for Phantom Dust, Adam Ice Cream. I want people to play it, right? I want multiplayer to be successful.、Um, you know, I came late to this party, right? And I discovered Phantom Dust on the Xbox 360.、Um, I played it and I was just like, oh my God, how did I miss this game? Like, how did I, how did me, like, being a, a design guy and being, you know, in the industry for so long, how did I miss and not know about、and、this? Like- it was just mind blowing to me that. Futatsugi had created this incredible blend of a strategy game and a combat game. Like this completely different fighting game than anyone had seen before. If people just love and keep playing Phantom Dust, especially the multiplayer, that makes a really great argument for us to do more stuff with Phantom Dust. And that's really what I want out of it. The fact that people like Adam and people like Phil Spencer, the people within Microsoft who are the biggest advocates for this game on the planet, These are the decision makers at Xbox in 2022. It's hard to imagine better allies in trying to make Phantom Dust happen than the head of the Xbox division and multiple other executive level employees. Which is part of why it felt so important to me to make this video now that this is the opportunity to rally support around this game. This might be our last shot at bringing back Phantom Dust, and it would really bum me out if I didn't at least try and help. To that end, I've put together a simple petition you can sign if you'd like to support the idea of us getting, at long last, a Phantom Dust sequel directed by Yukio Futatsugi himself. By taking a few seconds to sign this, you'll be helping show Microsoft that there's a meaningful contingent of people out there who recognize that this game was something special and who want to see its creator finally give us the sequel he spent the past 20 years dreaming about. And look, I know a lot of people say petitions don't do anything, but I'd say we've done this three times on this channel so far, and you know what? Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Beyond that, I really hope you join us for these Phantom Dust happy hours and in the Phantom Dust Discord. I'm really looking forward to finally logging onto this game and for the first time in over a decade, seeing a ton of multiplayer matches to hop into. Again, the link for all this stuff is in the description below. One last thing. This video has been years in the making. I shot that interview with Yukio back in 2020. And so, to finally celebrate finishing this project, I've teamed up with one of my favorite merch creators, Wind Scene, for this incredible one off bootleg Phantom Dust tee, designed in the style of old 2000s video game promo shirts. This limited time shirt will only be available for the next four weeks, so definitely grab one of these before they're gone forever. And lastly, thank you to my channel members for making videos like this one possible. We've got some great members only content lined up for this one, including my entire interview with Yukio Futatsugi, and for the first time, my full playthrough with commentary of Phantom Dust's entire single player campaign. Episodes of that will begin coming out once a week on Thursdays starting now. This is not the last time you'll hear me talk about Phantom Dust on this channel, not by a long shot. So stay tuned, subscribe, turn on notifications, whatever.、Uh, I'm going to keep making Phantom Dust content until I'm dead. <laughs> Goodbye. That's a good ending. I'm going to keep making Phantom Dust content until I'm dead.